Welcome, fellow armchair generals, to the liberation of the world from prosperity and freedom so that we can achieve equality of suffering. Yes, that's right. We're going to be playing as the Soviet Union. We're going to help Uncle Uncle Joe um, defend the Soviet Union and then, of course, spread socialism all around the world. And hello, IKB. Very good to hear. I'm glad it's still working and I hope working well. Your new computer, that is. Okay, Severus Snape. Um, can you again um, refresh me where you're at? Just so that I know. I try to get to know some of you guys to just, you know, generally. And hello, Arna. Good to have you here as well. All right. So, okay, we've got to start out here. Um, yes, I guess we can start with national focus. We have finished the five-year plan. Germany could do theirs in four years. Took the Soviet Union five years to do the plan. Serbia. Well, okay. Serbia. Never been there. But I understand it's a reasonably nice part of the world. I, you know, sort of sorry maybe a bit that you're having so much rain right now, but, uh, you know, it will pass. And, uh, Frankie, yep. I'm probably butchering that. You're very welcome. I am so glad that so many people have liked that mod. You don't know how important it is. And as you probably caught the thing, I am going back to more mod modding of it. Um, I don't know if it's going to be, a, well, it's going to be a significant update. Um, the current release. That thing I've just released is I'm calling it a beta version because it's not fully tested of uh, just an update for the latest version of Black Ice. And hello, Video Toaster. How you doing? Ontario, Canada. Okay, that's cool. Another Canadian here. I like Canadians. They're sort of a... Um, hmm. Would a bit more anglified Americans be a good description of that? Unless, of course, you're, which you're not in Quebec, of course, but they wouldn't be so much anglified. But I do like. And hello, Dijon. How you doing? Uh, we're just playing straight up. Soul XP. Um, yeah, we're just starting here and very happy to answer questions. Um, one, one of the moderators and friend of mine was, Ari was trying to push me to play, um, total, try out the total war mod again, because it has been updated to the latest version of, um, parts of iron four. And then I went back and watched about five minutes of one of my rant videos and I go, nope. Nope, 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 no more Total War. We want Leon Trotsky. Oh, man, no, 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 no. We're, we're, we're Stalinists. We're, 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 we're Stalinists. We're, we want to liberate people from, you know, prosperity and all. And hello. Uh, um, Krogan Rogan, Arizona. That's where my dad lives. Okay, so we're going to, um, like, well, we have choices here. Stalin Constitution, political power, opens up these things, good, but, and improved railways, that will help. Uh, Transpolar flights, you know, open up this stuff, nice, I'm sure. The Great Purge, we don't need to quite do that yet. We don't need to quite wreck our country just yet. So we're going to start with finishing the first five-year plan.
Yeah, we're we're looking at. Oh man, well. Hello, ASR. Well, you can look on my on my YouTube channel and see the Total War series, and I do at least two rant videos. I went in with, went into that mod having good hopes for it, and it just, in my opinion, it's so unhistorical. As Ari was saying, it probably is mostly designed as a um, multiplayer mod, and so I really, really don't like it. I like I like history based stuff, not unless unless you're going really um total fantasy like Kaiserreich, because that's what Kaiserreich is. I call it the weird and wacky world of Kaiserreich. And that, you know, that's just that's just playing it's not a World War Two thing, it's just a, you know, fantasy thing. And I'm good if we are if we are going to um go fantasy. And if, then I look at how well does the fantasy world hold up. Um, and Kaiser Reich's sort of kind of does. Role play installers resume without having an empty stomach. Well, I think the empty stomachs are mostly, well, no, probably most of the Soviet Union, but very much so in Ukraine. That the Holodomor. Um, as many of you know, I make mods and... I don't. I'm getting back into modding, and I'm. I don't. I don't have grand ex expectations for um, Hearts of Iron three, but I have ideas that as Hearts of Iron four matures more, I want to mod stuff like that, and I want to create things like Third Reich events, mods like Third Reich events for all the major countries, and. The hardest one for me to do of all of the countries is Russia for just complete despising of the Soviets. Not of the Russians. Not not anti-Russian. Anti-Soviet. And you know, I completely despise these people. Not that I like Nazis or anything like that. No, I don't like them, but I'm fascinated by the Nazis, but I'm not fascinated by the communists. I despise the communists. Then you have the, the language difficulty of the Cyrillic and dealing with that, that those things in combination make modding the Soviet Union the most difficult. And then how do you deal with things like the Holodomor in Ukraine and other places within the Soviet Union? Of, in fact, the... The whole little more was in the Ukraine, but oh, there's so much other stuff going on, and that just makes it very difficult for me to to see about modding. And oh, OCB, I enjoy your vision streams, but you hate how far. Well, look at this as not so much as um, trying to get you or encouraged to play the game. And I know some people just aren't interested in watching games they don't like or don't play, whether they like them or not, whether they don't play. But look at this as sort of a history chat and a generally to see how I'm doing strategy-wise. Hey, USA man. Um, kind of thing. So, play for 500 hours and it's arcadey sandbox game from yeah i have a lot of the, the same complaints about that we're gonna we have one less um slot than germany does which i think is appropriate germany had better research going on so we're also going to expand our civil factories Let's get some stuff back here behind Moscow, because if we've lost Moscow, I'm not saying we couldn't theoretically come back, but it's not like a good likelihood. Okay, we need, I, I know, I just sort of started this up a little bit before. Um, starting stream. So I sort of kind of know what I want to do, just an opening move. Now let's move up. These submarines first, because they're mostly done. 
and we'll build quick just to get them out of production. Yes, that could go up there. We'll make sure we concentrate our research on as we go along and get more of it. Well, not research, production, boy. And trade, no, trade. Um, boy, trade. Change the icons and play too many different versions. Okay, we need some rubber. Who do we want to help out? Well, Dutch East Indies will get taken over by Japan, and so will Malaya. So we don't necessarily want to help out our enemies, and Sam was likely to go. So we'll, we'll trade with Brazil. They're likely to be our best source for rubber. Just finish all the ships and then sort out your own navy, your own building navy. Yeah. You seen video about Soviet recovery from World? No, I've not seen that um, TIK video. I just watched. Um, oh, um, military history visualizer or not visualize? He has two channels. Um, the Austrian guys um look at um a little bit you just out but also a little bit in preparation for this of uh, stalin disbanding the um soviet armor corps uh in 1939 video but i do know of tik and i've watched a bunch of his stuff let's see ever get hoax on albanian throw oh hoax on albanian throw um in other words you get a son Stalin. Okay, I don't quite get that because, um, uh, oh man, um, Zog, King Zog was the uh, king of Albania at this time until Mussolini kicks him out. A Road to 56. I don't remember. I got played that, but that's been a long time. Maybe that's worth another look. I don't know. I'm sort of, you know, I'm waiting for, and I think they may have released a beta test version out, uh, uh, Black Ice People, for um, the new version of Hearts of Iron 4. And there, I had two major issues with them. One was trade range. They radically reduced trade range so that Romania could not trade with Germany without going via ships. Which obviously gets cut off once, you know, Gibraltar and whatnot is taken. And I know the trade range was specifically set up so that Romania could trade oil with Germany overland. So they specifically set it up to do that. And they said they had some sort of other reasons for doing it. Yeah, but you don't want to cut cut Germany off from its main source of, of oil. That I just think is wrong. That I know how to fix. Super easy. Just go in and change one one value trade range and do that. That's fixable. The other thing I had was a problem, serious problem with their um, invasion of Russia effects, which I say were way overdone. Minor versions of what they were doing I could agree with, and especially deep into Russia, and maybe the effects as they sort of stood deep into Russia, I would agree with, but not Lithuanian freaking border um, states. Can't agree with that. I don't know how hard it would be for me to disable those, but that's sort of what it would take. E either be assured that they fixed the worst of the effects or figure out how to disable it, for me to play Black Ice again. The other mod I'm sort of waiting for an update is NSIG, which I've heard things about it that I should maybe try. Hail Zog, yes. Hey, you know, um, in the upcoming version of Third Reich events, we will have um, an event covering the wedding of King Zog. No more spoilers than that, but his wedding happens in Third Reich events. Or is in the upcoming one that's yet to be. Well, ever hoax so was an anti revanchist Stalinist until his death in Oh, okay, you're talking about after um World War Two. Right. I don't know a whole lot of that. I do know that um 
Romania or Albania was, like you say, up until his death, a Stalinist, even more so than um, any of the other calm bloc nations, up until sort of the end of Albania. Yeah, I'm. I'm not necessarily spending lots of time at it. I spent uh, and. Oh, four hours of it at last night um, modding. I mean, just got a few events done. Most of it was poking around trying to figure out how to do a few things and that I knew how to do in Hearts of Iron 4, how to translate them back to Hearts of Iron 3 because I'm starting the modding stuff I'm starting to do is just mostly the new stuff that I created for Third Reich events for Hearts of Iron 4, which is never released and don't even ask for it to be released because it would need massive updating to work with things now. And it's just, you know, not not anything ready to be released. It would need a massive rework. And before it's released, I have to do some sort of deal with um, Paradox, I think. Or I'm going to release it. I also forgot about the Civil War stuff in Yugoslavia during the war. Yeah, there's a lot of that stuff um happened civil war would be good um yeah i know you said you were from serbia but i have sort of some serious heartburn over the civil war and mainly serbia's actions in the civil war of the breakup of yugoslavia finally in the 90s Having, I mean, I wasn't there, obvious. Well, actually, while some of that was going on, I was right over in here in Austria for a little bit of it. Um, but, I mean, I wasn't in, in the Civil War, but just sort of um, heartburn for that stuff and, and having, in that sense, lived through it. I mean, I didn't live through the violence of it. I mean, I lived through watching it on television. Just, you know, I don't want to say anything, you know, push it. My association is no more than that. Are you going to take over the Middle East? Oil? I don't know. Don't forget armored cars and spies. Yes, absolutely. Thanks for reminding me about the spies. So we are going to create an agency, and it's going to be the NKVD. I was reading up on that a little bit as well. So that will take some of our resources. We'll speed this up here. No, we're not training any new divisions because we have... Big deficits right now in equipment that we're going to hope to alleviate with production. We'll click here. Oh, come on. Yes. That'll be a little better, just rearranging my windows. Yeah, I'm sure, you know, if you were alive then, you, you had a lot more a uh, lot more impact than I did from it. And civil wars are brutal things. And um, I definitely know that more focused on Serbian was subject to a um, targeted at, at military assets, uh, my understanding, but military assets can be near civilian targets, um, U.S. air campaigns. Uh, I'm sure that is. Didn't the NKV have army units? Um, yes, the NKV did have um, not army units, they'd be NKVD, and... I don't, I don't know quite the um, structure, and I don't think, well, unless, because NKVD, and I'm not an expert on, everybody who's watching now and later, please understand, I am not an expert. I'm going to learn things by playing this about the Soviet Union during this time. I, I've read books like, um... Oh, Hitler versus Stalin, which looks at um, 
I mean, it's sort of a salacious title, but it looks at the the German war with the Soviet Union in World War II. And they go into a lot of the, the stuff, and it mainly looks around production and military strategy and that kind of thing. But there's a lot about the Soviet Union I am just, um, you know, not an expert on. So I, I have some knowledge, most assuredly. But it's not like we're, we're jumping into to Germany where I know a lot. I mean, I know a lot about Germany. Um, or other Americans and British where I also know quite a bit. Japan where, you know, I did have three years of the Japanese language and I've studied Japan fairly extensively, not mostly focused on World War II. But I probably I know Japan better than I know the Soviet Union during you know so this is like one of the, of the of the big countries this is the one I know the least of so um, I think and I'm sort of getting there so I think the border guards units were technically part of the NKVD at least at some point you know the those aren't I'm not uh, you know these are border guards not. Um, uh, um, Military units along the border, I'm talking, you know, sort of, you know, rifle and submachine gun armed policeman type personnel. And those, of course, would have, especially in the very opening moments of the war, had fought the Germans. But later, my understanding is the NKVD units weren't set up as combat units like the Waffen SS. This is my understanding. They were the units that were sitting back over here on this side of the river, threatening to shoot anyone who didn't go in, you know, unarmed to assault Stalingrad kind of thing. That, um, that type of thing. So they're, they're internal security. But with the sort of um, idea of, you know, being willing to shoot and go after Soviet Union units that don't obey. So it's it's much more like that. Yes, I did read that article there. Thank you for posting the link. And um, Nikolai um, Yezov, I think is how you pronounce his name, Nikolai Yezov, is um, the commander of the um, NKVD um, starting in January or starting in 1936, not necessarily January. Okay. Um, we are going to add passive defense so that we don't need to um, have people or put our agents in there. Yeah, we're 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 producing a lot of equipment right now and focusing on stuff to get um these for regular divisions, less so the motorized divisions out of their hole before we start expanding the army. Soviet Union is one of the great tragedies of the 20th century. On a, well, no, it's, it's the greatest tragedy of the 20th century. The second greatest tragedy of the 20th century is China, but China would not have been such a great tragedy had um, the Soviet Union not existed. What will help calm me down? I don't know what you're linking to. Know something about the stand countries? Well, you're you're talking, you know, in you know, Uzbekistan, Turkmenistan, um, not much. You know, I can maybe come up with a. Well, obviously, it's Afghanistan and Pakistan, um, but there's a few others. Whether they um, are all modern countries, I don't know. But yeah, not lots. 
I will, yeah. Studying history is a big, big effing subject, as you well know. Okay, we can we can recruit another agent here, and let's see who we have. Kim Philby. Ah, good. They have Kim Philby here. Wow. Richard Sorg or Howard Sorg. I don't know. I think I've heard of him. Um. I've definitely heard of, about somebody um, who was a German, who was a communist that leaked information to the to the Soviets. Kim Philby, of course, was a massive spy in, in Britain, but they didn't think he was a spy because he went to, I think it was Oxford. If it wasn't Oxford, it's Cambridge. It was one of those two things. Um, okay, well, yeah, let's do um, infiltrator double agent, yes. Natural order, seducer, tough, groomed. Mm. See, he's well groomed, man. Oh. Yeah, gamers meditating for a moment. Artists, artists. Oh, they think they're clever. And now, of course, I do believe this vastly. Uh, Chibezov here is a completely fake person. And I do understand that these faces here are um, somewhat random generated. Um, now, Philby I, and these two, I'm pretty sure they're they're based on real people and you basing it on the real face here. And so these traits here that Vasily has well groomed and he has a beard now yeah I don't know tough guy enemy operatives intel extraction rate mm, I don't know let's see Stage a coup cost. We're going to try to stage a coup. Where would we do that? I don't know that we need to stage a coup. Um, I think we're going to go with him. He's going to operative intel extraction rate. See, we're going to try to protect our own Soviet Union and enforce the, the Stalinistic will on all Trotskyites out there. Um, do you know something about the Ugars and their situation right now? Ugars. No, I don't. Is that the people that um uh the um oh the sort of um white con guy um forgetting his name but that though he was dead by 1936 um that russian who who led the mongols for a while is that who is that involved with that or something i'm sorry i don't specifically know about that he's worrying that your return to modding will end in a world in dom world domination well it might there's worse things out there than ending try a coup in iran hmm. not the worst idea Well, we have him now. He's here. He's hunting domestic spies. Intel agency. Finish the five-year plan, which will give me more. Um, yeah, suicide pills. We're not going to let anybody capture it. Trey, and then we're yes, we're going to we got um, more civilian factories. Now we're going to go for more military factories. The oh, Uyghurs, okay, in China, which um, toppled to Mao. There are three million people. Yeah, um, yeah.
Hmm. Um. It's a little off topic, so I don't know how much I want to go into it right here and now. Um. Because I'm. I'm not. Yeah. Um. One of the um. Uh. What is it? Emperor Chaka, I believe. I believe his screen name is. He's often here, um, though not here today, I don't believe. Um, he has connections or is um, connections to the Chinese Muslim community, which is different than the Uyghurs. I'm talking Han Chinese Muslims. And Chinese, as in, as is, I guess we would call them in racial ethnicity, not um, nationality, as in passports or what state they live in. Um, and I don't know the current state on the mainland of Chinese Chinese Muslims, as opposed to Uyghurs, which are more over in. Sinkian over here, I think. Um, you see, this is Zibai San Ma. This is these are the the Ma click is this this group here. Um, yeah. Um, China's looking for Han conformity, and any ethnic group racial or cultural and there are a bunch in this part of china that will often have communities of say four to 24 million people and might be you know a dominant um ethnic group in like a couple of provinces here in this scale um are just a small minority out of out of all you know all of china they're uh, um on a path to suppress all of these um different groups so um yeah that's what the, they're on they're on a path to to suppress any any cultural groups which would include mongolians which includes Koreans, because there are there are a lot of Koreans living inside of China. Um, it's a lot of different. Yes, free Hong Kong, revolution of our time. China is asshole. Yes, yes, very much so. Um, and I don't think China's listening to me today, but they might be. I don't know. They do listen to me sometimes, I know. What was the Soviet doctrine on tanks during this time? I'm saying this um, because because I guess you didn't see it. Sorry. So, yeah, I got it because I'm sort of watching two chats, both YouTube and. Um, OK, well, let's keep this going while I talk a bit more. Ch um, right now in 36, in 36, the Soviet Union is. Close to the top of the heap and tank doctrine and putting it in britain might be a little better france definitely not germany definitely not and we're talking 36. uh the soviets are really pushing ahead now their formations as i'm understanding them are um there are combined arm elements of it but they're very very tank heavy they're trying to sort of if you will do some and they're a deep battle doctrine is what they they see tanks and armored fighting is how they look at this stuff now they changed their mind later on um suicide pill is good okay i don't know we're, we're gonna keep doing some of this but i don't know how much because i don't know that i don't plan on doing much tech stealing right now Diplomatic training controls, great missions, effects, diplomatic pressure. Oh, that sounds like a good one. A little cheesy there using Thunderball graphics there, but yeah, okay. They're always listening. Well, I know what you're saying, um, Frankie. 
but um one of the one of my um usual viewers and often um guy we know and i play a lot of war thunder with is a marine uh currently stationed u.s marine currently stationed in, in the um uh u.s embassy in beijing so i just presume that he has a few you know people monitoring any any of his digital communication so i i mean literally i'm often listened to by chinese monitor monitors because just because of him and i'm you know he's he's on and and whatnot so i'm just sure that they listen they watch they pay attention to anything coming or going out of his his you know communication for any sort of intel that they could possibly get and you can't imagine other that it would be any other ways and i would hope the u.s is doing the same to every um every other least major nation that has people stationed in the U.S. and trying to monitor all of their stuff. Second London Naval Treaty is signed. All right. Um, why should they restrict themselves like this? Okay, basic tools. Very good. Okay, well, we have basic tools. We're going to go with um, U.S.-style um, production. Now, boy, I forget his name, but... There's a depression going on in America right now. Um, it is um, made worse and extended so much that it's called the Great Depression by FDR's policies. And I will not say that FDR wants a depression. He does not. But what he loves about it is the control it gives him over U.S. society. And so he is doing massive amounts of social experiments because of the depression. And he's trying to get America out of it, but everything he does deepens the depression, makes it worse, makes it more extensive. Because America is doing so badly that around this time, maybe a little later, I'm not exactly sure of the date, but around this time, one, I think it was one of the guys who does Chrysler, um, automobile manufacturing, gets a contract to go to the Soviet Union to build um, an automotive plant in the Soviet Union. And this is approved by the U.S. government. It wouldn't have happened at this time without their... So they bring U.S. manufacturing techniques to the Soviet Union, um, something that basically for World War II, only the U.S. and only Russia were able to achieve the success of U.S. manufacturing techniques on the scale um, that's going on. Germany, ooh, nowhere near it. Germany, de Germany fails it at this miserably. They only have one industry that um, they achieved the goal in. IKB can answer that one if he wishes to. Um, Chinese Gordon style, what are we talking about? Um, there's also um, Frederick Townsend of the Ever Victorious Army. The only, yes, locomotive production, absolutely. And I knew you would get it with that hint. And I, I, I knew you knew IKB. Um, oh, um, Townsend Ward. Oh, man. He is the, I think, only um, European, he's an American, but the only non Chinese to become a Mandarin, you know, which is an official status of the Chinese Empire. And it is still somewhat reverted. And he sort of takes over from Chinese Gordon and sort of improves the and makes the ever victorious army even more victorious. Um, and so we are going with the U.S. style of manufacturing, cent centralized production. And that is the one area where that Germany does do American style production. Watching the stream from the start just joined. Okay. Well, Nikos, you will have a bit catching up.
And boy, I wish, you know, I actually did. Ah, you know, artists. I don't know if this is artists or if this is, um, um the devs wanting to do a James Bond Thunderball image there. Okay. And you probably don't know what I'm talking about. You're all too young. Um, old timey movies aren't your your thing. Okay, well hmm. I don't know. We're gonna we're gonna just focus our production on getting through these, I guess, for the moment. Pretty yellow jackets. What's the difference between machine tools and regular tools? Okay, um, machine tools and regular tools. Um, a machine tool can make the exact same thing over and over and over. Or you mean, are you talking in the game or in, in reality? Sorry, if, if that's, um, maybe I was thinking you were, um, or, or research, why am I research, this is it. Um, basic machine tools, so you just, in reality, okay. Um, a machine tool, which a wrench is not a machine tool. Uh, a machine tool can make the exact same thing over and over and over and it needs um shall we say oversight by the um by a human that it, well it, it can have that in the pre-computer age it needs that in the pre-computer age afterwards it can be done that so meaning if it will um oh a good good um thing is uh, a stamping machine that takes a round piece of metal you either by hand or by machine drop it into a thing and then a big press comes down and it, and it presses and makes a, a helmet you know it's a flat piece of steel you press it into a helmet shape and every single helmet is exactly the same coming out of the machine that is a machine tool it does it it does the job the same job over and over and over and over until it's reset because you can take the mold out and change it from a helmet to a chamber pot because that could also be a, a metal compressed thing actually they made a lot of chamber pots out of german helmets in the netherlands i believe after world war ii because um, they had a lot of them around and they just converted them to chamber pots as a local thing so that is a machine tool it does the exact same thing over a drill press would be a machine tool because and if you know what a drill prep meaning it's it's a big machine that has a drill in it that you have like a bracket that you stick in the thing you want drilled through it it goes into the bracket it holds it there and then you just pull the lever and it drills through it in the exact same spot so every time that drill goes down it puts us the hole in the exact same spot and then you hand it to the next guy who may drill another hole in a different spot but each hole is drilled in the exact same spot where this here although it is a mechanical tool here you can see this is a handheld tool and so is a wrench is a handheld tool these these you have a hand holding it there so every single drill won't be the same so that is the difference between drill okay thanks ikb link to a drill press and so you have a machine tool so it's it there are there are, you are an operator of a machine tool not not i'm not saying there isn't a lot of skill there there is but you're not a craftsman shall we say uh may not be the best distinction where a craftsman you know makes individually fitted items and um come along with some of this lathes and milling machines right yes now not all production is equally good um one of the british um fitters as they're called in britain a fitter um we would call him a mechanic in the usa um a fitter 
visited a, I think it was a tank workshop, but it was some sort of um, automotive workshop. I'm pretty sure it was in Britain during World War II, you know, an army base thing. And after a little bit, it took a little bit to realize what he was seeing, what he was missing in looking around this U.S. Army workshop. Couldn't find one in there. What was the what were the Americans missing that the British saw as a um, essential part of a mechanic sh shop? The Stahlhelm chamber pot, yes, the ultimate revenge, yes, that was also part of the the idea of that. And it was a vice. The Americans did not have a vice in their mechanic shop. Where all the British units had vices in their shops. Why would the British have a vice in their shop? In their, you know, field field maintenance shops. You know, these are the, you know, um, frontline things. And the British the British would have a vice and the Americans wouldn't. Can somebody answer that? That's a trivia question. I don't know if you could even Google this one. But I don't know. Could IKB figure why a fitter shop in like the British tank unit and a American mechanics wouldn't have a vice? And of course, Americans knew exactly what vices were. I mean, they We'll do the Stalin Constitution, I think, right now. Hmm. Okay, we got a few more. Let's look at our... Okay, we need more rifles, so we're producing more than we're using, though, of course, we're not expanding or consuming any of our rifles right now, so... Okay, IKB knows, and I, I, I would credit that you would likely know this. What's a vice? Okay, um, a vice is a, a metal thing that normally like is bolted down to a, a counter, you know, a, a tabletop. And... Um, you have a crank handle on it, and it opens and closes the jaw jaws. That it hold, and so you put something in it, and then you crank it tight so it won't move. So you know it holds something tight. So if you, then you want to drill on it, you want to drill it, you want to hammer on it, you want to file on it, you want to um, just hold it steady because you only have two hands, and so the other two two hands are busy doing something, and you're just wanting to hold, you know, wanting a third hand to hold something from from moving. Okay, thanks. I can be a bench vice. Yes. And so that's a vice. Um, that's, that's a vice. The U.S. The U.S. had mechanics. The British had fitters. I think they're still called fitters. I don't know if they're still fitting, but I think they're still called fitters in the British Army. And it's cool that traditional names hang around. Okay, I don't think anybody's going to get this, so I'll I'll go on those watching this. Okay, see, in a um, a British workshop for tanks, trucks, whatever it is, they get a mechanical part. You know, oh, this this thing is damaged. We need it. We need a replacement. So they get a replacement, and they go try to stick it on, and it doesn't work. You don't see my hands moving. It, 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 yeah, it doesn't fit. So they got to go put it in the vise and file on it a bit. And then see if it fits now. No, no. Okay, file on it a bit more. See if it, this is where they get the term fitter. Try to fit the parts together. They got to file on it. Well, maybe let's file on the other part that it's attached to a little bit. Okay, yeah, okay. Now we got it fit. Now, okay. And so we got it all fit. And then, you know, bolt it together, screw it together, whatever, whatever the um, things. But they had to fit them together. The Americans had no need to, because their quality of production was that no matter, and, and this was even if they're coming out of the same factory in Britain, but in America, if you had a part for a truck, a tank, 
whatever it was, and there were different factories making those parts. They all made them to the same quality, to the same specifications that they would just naturally go together. There was no need to file on, to hammer on, to whatever it might be to get things to fit together. There was no fitting needed. So they just um, would assemble. And so if you go to a mechanic shop, yeah, they may have vices in them, but they don't generally speaking necessarily need them because they're just putting the stuff on and taking them on off the car. But in Britain, the quality of manufacturer for automotive vehicles, which includes tanks, was so poor through World War II that they needed this manufacturing class. That class has vices like that. So, it, so that's the name of what I saw. Yes. They just didn't have the quality control. Hello, Lanzer. I guess Lanz or Lanzar. It just it was a quality control. It wasn't so much of a standardization, meaning it's not like they were um, radically different. It's just that they wouldn't go together well without a bit of fitting. It's just like ah, this is a good enough job. Okay, we're going to keep the live stream going. Don't worry, everybody here who's, who's live. But we're going to end this episode for YouTube. So uh, thanks for all of you watching on YouTube. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. And, uh, of course, hit that like button and make comments below. See you next time for more Arts of